welcome back everybody to the the next video in our intermediate to advanced civil 3d series in the last video we took a look at fields within autocad and even civil 3d to just pull some general specific more drawing uh, project related information from your drawing and save it uh, displayed in your model space in this next video we're going to be taking a look at data shortcuts within civil 3d now data shortcuts are definitely a way to keep your drawing file size smaller and keep all that high density, high geometry information out of your submission file and keep that in a design related file only. This helps with drawing file size. You won't have a super large drawing and we're gonna take a look at a couple of the files I have and just see how large they are and how to do the data shortcuts. So to think of a data shortcut, Think of it similar to an XREF, the way we can open a, a drawing and attach it to another drawing as an XREF, we'll be able to see the data, we'll be able to do some very basic general commands to the data, however that data will not be in our drawing, it's mainly a displayed image of the drawing, it's just a ghost, a ghosted view I would describe it as. We can still change all the styles and, and display options, it's just the high quality high density geometry is in another file. It also updates similar to an XREF. So someone else could be working on a, a large surface and as soon as they save it, you'll get a notification that says this drawing has been changed, update the XREF. S very similar to, or sorry, the data shortcut, update your surface, very similar to an XREF itself. Now where data shortcuts show their true power is if you have a large existing ground surface, if you have a LiDAR surface that is 100,000 to a million, two million points, you don't want that data inside your submission file, inside your working file. You wanna get that data as far away from that file as you can and have it reside in its own file where it's saved by itself. This is to keep the file sizes down. Now to take a look at my file size, the drawing that I do have open with all this information, I've got some XREFs in here, I got a number of data shortcuts. Everything is being brought together at the end because I want to keep the file size down. So the, the drawing I have open right now is 4.48 megabytes total. So in terms of a civil 3D drawing, that is relatively small. My template that I use is one megabyte. This is not much larger than that. However, if I look at all the data shortcut drawings that are contributing to this, we see a much different story. So my parcels drawing, this is XREF over, is 1.4 megabytes. My sanitary and storm layout is 4.3. My water drawing is 5.3. However, my existing ground and my corridor, this is the, the big one, is 22.2 megabytes. My lot grading surface is 11.4 megabytes. So these two files together are over 30 megabytes. And if I was to have all this information in the one drawing, my, my drawing file might be upwards of 50, 60, 70 megabytes. And it's not only gonna take longer to open, it's gonna take longer to save, it's gonna take longer to do any of your civil 3D related commands. That's because when we go to design we want as much detail as possible when we get that final submission. We want an incredibly accurate model. We want a high density. If I take a look at this surface here, and I look at the statistics of my surface properties, I've got 45,000 triangles in this little tiny surface because my corridor is at such a high detailed interval. I also have three corridors, four corridors in this drawing, three for the intersections. And again, the frequencies are all set for half a meter, which is about a foot and a half, give or take. And that's just on the intersections themselves. That doesn't include the main, the main road that includes all my knuckles in and my cul-de-sac. So I have a lot of information in this one drawing. A lot of triangles, a very heavily detailed surface. So I would want to created uh, this file stays by itself it's my existing in corridor there is very little other information in here i've got my parcel layout because i need to know where the road wraps in on my parcels i've got my surface i've got my corridors 
and I might have the surrounding X refs. So uh, not very much information in here, but high quality information. So I would want to data shortcut my existing ground and my design surface for my corridor out of this file. So within your tool space, at the bottom of the tool space under the prospector tab, we have a data shortcuts area. Now right now it's not populated, it's completely empty because I have not made a folder and I haven't assigned anything. So I'm going to right click on my data shortcuts and you'll want to do this from the drawing that you have that high quality information in. So you want, I want to data shortcut from my existing ground and my corridor file here. I want to pull that surface out and access it somewhere else. So we can't just select create data shortcuts. We can't just go ahead and do it. We have to uh, make a new data shortcuts project folder. And Civil 3D will pop up just a generic working folder, but we this is not what we want to do yet. We want to set a working folder, so where we want to save these. I am going to select uh, somewhere on my H drive and under the course. And I'm just going to select this, uh, j this folder here. Again, where you save these data shortcuts, you want to leave them. You never want to move them. So make sure this is set up properly the first time. So I'm going to select that folder and make that my working folder. So when I now come in here and right click and go new data shortcuts project folder, it is now referencing that location, my H drive, the NGD376, and the Civil 2 drawings. And it also asks for a name if you want to uh, go ahead and name them. I'm just going to name this shortcuts. It might make a double shortcuts folder because Civil 3D will make a underscore shortcuts, I believe. And then we can use a project template. So if we had a template stored on the server, folder styles, it would pull that in for us. However, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make this shortcuts. So I'm going to hit OK now. And this should populate the side data shortcuts now. And it's showing me the location that they are currently saved to. So if I go back to my server window here, and I go under the, uh, the Civil 2 drawings, I have shortcuts. And then Civil 3D has also made that under course, under, uh, underscore shortcuts. So this is where the link to your files is saved. It does not save the files. It does not put any files here. These are, are XML files that say, find this data shortcut in another folder. Right now, they'll all be empty because we haven't populated anything. However, I'm going to expand surfaces. Right now, it's empty. As soon as we make this data shortcut, it's going to not be empty anymore. So once that's set up, we're going to right click. You may have to associate your project to the current drawing. Sometimes I've had Civil 3D lose the association, lose where things are saved. Uh, it tends to cause some issues. So you might have to just associate project to current drawing. And then you can create your data shortcuts. And that's a simple right click. And I'll do that again. Right click, create data shortcuts. Now inside this drawing, I have a large number of objects. I have four corridors, as I've said. I have a, a number of alignments. So when you're building, when you're building your corridors, when you're building your um, building alignments, I've got four main road alignments. I have a whole bunch of offset alignments. All of these items can be data shortcutted. So we could pull them out of this file and put them in another file. However, what I really want is my combined surface. So I've built this corridor, I built these surfaces, I paste them all together, and I have a final combined road surface. So I've taken everything and put it into this one surface, and that's my combined road. So I want to extract that, or I want to have access to that. I also, I also want to have access to my existing ground. Now, I'm not taking anything else. I'm not going to take any alignments. I'm not going to take my corridors. I want those to reside in this drawing and this drawing only. So I've got my two surfaces. I'm going to hit OK and give Civil 3D 
30 seconds or so. And to show you the folder here, we now have two XML files inside of this folder. Now, if I open one of these up, and we'll see if I can, it opens up in just Internet Explorer here. All it says is where the drawing shortcut. It says the file name, it says what kind of object it is, the visibility, uh, it's some information, it's a tin surface, it's called, uh, it's on this layer. It's a link to the file. It is only, I believe, one kilobyte. So it does not save your surface here. It mainly provides that link. So where this becomes handy, um, I have these data shortcutted. So my existing encoders uh, data sh shortcutted into my lot grading surface. From there, I've graded out my residential lots. And I've put this, uh, I've data shortcutted this surface into an underground utility surface. So all my geometry is in separate files. And then I combine them at the very end to data shortcut everything else together. So if I just create a new file, a completely blank drawing here, to bring these items in, it's simply data shortcuts. You might have to set your working folder back to the location you selected before. Sometimes Civil 3D seems to lose the data shortcut save location. It might have something to do with logging on and off a server, but you just might have to reset your working folder. Everything inside of this window here under these data shortcuts will appear down below. So this will be your corridors, your alignments, all those other pieces of information. And to show you that we can go ahead afterwards and re-add things, I've gone back to my existing encoder drawing. I'm gonna create data shortcuts. And let's, in this case, I'm going to select absolutely everything, which I normally would never do. I want less options that I can make mistakes on when I'm going to do the work in other subsequent files. We're gonna give Civil 3D 30 seconds to a minute to create these shortcuts. All right, the shortcuts are done and we can now see there's a plus beside corridors, a plus beside alignments. So I'm gonna flip back to this blank drawing and I'm gonna expand my data shortcuts, I'm gonna expand my surfaces and I wanna see my combined road design. So I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna create a reference. Civil 3D will bring this into the drawing. We're creating a surface reference. It's called combined road design. We can fill in the description if we want. It's gonna automatically layer it for me and it's using this 0.5 and 0.1 surface style, which I'm okay with right now. I will hit okay. And again, give Civil 3D 30 seconds or whatnot here to finish it. And then I'm gonna run a simple zoom extents. Now we have this surface in this drawing. If I click on it, it is a surface data reference. If I expand surfaces, there is now a little square with a tiny little arrow inside of it showing that it's a data shortcut surface. If I click the plus, I cannot add data to this. I cannot change the way the surface fundamentally works. We can add masks and we can run the dreaded watershed command. If you guys, if we look up here, we can do water drop. We can do some very basic commands to this. We can change the surface style though. We can come in here and look at, say we want to see the triangles. We can turn triangles on and off. The, the functionality is still there. We just cannot modify the data itself. And I believe we cannot even delete lines, but let's give that a try. So if I go under edit surface, delete lines. Oh, it does let, no, it doesn't let me because this is a data shortcut surface. So if I wanted to clear this information, if I wanted to get rid of some of these triangles, I would have to go back to my existing surface. So I'm in the corridor, existing in corridor drawing again. I can turn my triangles on in here. And then under edits, I'll delete lines. We'll delete, we'll delete a handful of them. I don't wanna to modify this project too much. Now I'm going to save this drawing now.
Once I click save, and Civil 3D completes the save, it's going to pop up in my drawing number two that you have made edits to the surface. Do you want to update it? And I'm going to flip over to my other drawing here, now that the save is complete. And Civil 3D in the bottom right says data shortcut definitions may have changed. So you could have your coworker or your friend working on uh, a large existing ground surface or the design surface, and you could be working on another file with underground utilities and pipes and whatnot, and they could you could be working concurrently. As soon as they would save, you would get the updates. So I'm going to click Synchronize, and we'll see that these this handful of triangles that I had removed from the other drawing will update and they'll be removed from the surface as well. And there we go. So that's data shortcuts in a nutshell. There's a few finicky pieces that I've encountered uh, specifically with alignments and profiles. If you bring in the alignments, you gotta regenerate the profiles and not, uh, not all the, the profiles come along with it. They have to be added in manually. Pipe networks seem to work pretty well. They'll, they'll actually reflect the information. However, pressure networks, unless something has changed in 2021, pressure networks will display as long straight pieces of the pipe. There is a way around that to make them follow the surface again, but from what I've encountered, they are still a little bit buggy.